and when thou prayest. Thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray, standing in the synagogues, and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut to thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Israelites, let's get right into the message. Many of you are happy to know how to utilize spiritual warfare to achieve victories over your enemies. Many of you are dealing with personal attacks that you need help in finding ways to be delivered from your personal struggles. Instead of speaking on a global level about the well-being of our people, let's get personal to help you achieve greater victories in your personal wars against the kingdom of darkness. Collectively, as a people, we are under attack. Before we can be stable enough to win the battles as a nation, we have to win our own personal battles to see clearly to help bring change to the community. The Most High revealed to his people the first steps to take is to repent and confess your sins. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Israelites, sin separates you from the Most High. If you're not acknowledging the sins that is giving the kingdom of darkness access to your life, you won't find deliverance from the kingdom of darkness. Instead of deliverance, you will be in bondage. You have to know the boundaries the Most High have set in the statutes and commandments the Most High gave to his people to follow. If you transgress the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Most High, you're in sin. There's no other definition to sin but the transgression of the laws of the Most High. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. Sin is not what men have declared it to be. Today in the beast system, a homosexual relationship is not considered sin. The synagogue of Satan have laws in place to protect such relationships. If we violate the laws that protect these relationships, there's consequences that follow for violating these laws. The laws that were created to protect the alphabet community are laws and traditions created by men. If we break the laws, the spiritual wickedness in high places created to protect rebellion, we are not sinning. Because sin is not the transgression of the laws of men. Sin is the transgression of the laws of the Most High. According to the laws of the Most High, a homosexual relationship is sin. The Most High forbid his people to engage in same-sex relationships. Everyone who engage in such relationships are transgressing the laws of the Most High. When you transgress the laws of the Most High, you're in sin. Or do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who have sex with men, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. The laws of men doesn't view homosexuality as sin. However, the laws of the Most High say it is sin. Did you hear the scriptures? The scriptures let us know everyone who participate in the sins described in the word would not inherit the kingdom of the Most High. The words of the Most High are crystal clear on what sins you engage in that prevent you from inheriting the kingdom of the Most High. 
The few listed in the scriptures you just heard are not the only sins that block your entry to the coming kingdom. In the beast system, everything the scriptures deem as sin is acceptable. Some of these iniquities are promoted in the beast culture. The synagogue of Satan made us focus on respecting and upkeeping the laws created by men. The synagogue of Satan ignored the laws of the Most High. The spiritual wickedness in high places don't even acknowledge the laws and statutes of the Most High. Because the people are focused on upkeeping the laws of men, many people are transgressing the laws of the Most High regardless of their religious faith. Israelites and Gentiles, that is sin. This is why it's important for you to repent of all sins. Don't focus on the sins of our people collectively. Instead, focus on your own personal sins. The scriptures tell us to remove the beam out of our eyes first in order to see clearly to remove the speck out of our brother's and sister's eyes. Thou hypocrite. First cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the moat out of thy brother's eye. If everyone repent of their sins on a personal level, as a nation, our sins will decrease and bring the favor of the Most High into our lives. If everyone repent of their unrighteousness, as a community, we will thrive. That is why it's important for you to work on yourself to attack the strongholds the Satans have over your life. On a personal level, we have to work on ourselves first to receive the healing that we need to change as a nation. If we're only focusing on our nation's sins and ignoring our personal life, nothing will change. That is why the indigenous black people keep going around in circles. Israelites, as the people of the Most High, don't use religious standards that was created by men to determine your righteousness. If the laws and words of the Most High say is sin, then it's sin. No man can override what sin is. I know you're used to the workers of iniquity having the final say to what goes on in this world. We all have witnessed the synagogue of Satan transforming what is evil into good and making the people believe what is good is evil. The scriptures did say this would happen. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. The spiritual wickedness in high places don't have the final say, nor do they have the power to change the laws of the Most High. By now, we all should know that the beast system is set up to be a rebellion towards the Most High. Don't let the Satans deceive you into believing the laws they created in their nations are the laws of the Most High. Nothing in the beast culture represents the Most High. That is why the laws of the Most High are absent in the beast system. We are living in the times of the Gentiles. The times of the Gentiles are not the times where the people will serve the Most High. The earth is in the hands of the wicked. Therefore, nothing they do will be to the glory of the Most High. Israelites and indigenous black people all over the world, that is why you shouldn't follow the heathens regardless to how righteous they make themselves appear to be. The earth is in the hands of the wicked. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. It covers the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? The wicked don't rule in righteousness, but in wickedness. That is why the people are mourning all over the world. The wicked are in authority. That is why you shouldn't follow them. Israelites and Gentiles, it's extremely important for you to know what sin is. You must acknowledge your wrongdoing and repent. Sin that is not dealt with becomes iniquity. I know religion have us believing we're righteous and heavenly bound regardless of our sins. Israelites and Gentiles, it's time for you to examine yourself. You must work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Israelites, once you repent with a pure heart, you have to humble yourself before the Most High. 
the Most High can't use the proud at all. Last week, the Most High showed you how important it is to be humble. In spiritual warfare, being humbled is what will get the Most High to fight for you. The Most High can't do anything through the proud. Spiritual warfare is involving the Most High to intercede on your behalf. You have to have a humble spirit to see the hands of the Most High. A prideful person is deceiving to believing he or she is the one destroying strongholds, casting out devils, and slaying their enemies. It's the Most High behind the scenes fighting for you. A prideful person won't be able to see what is happening behind the scenes. The meek will see the army of the Most High taking vengeance on their behalf. The Most High let us know he will repay. The scriptures didn't say we will repay, but the Most High will repay. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. If we know how to get the army of the Most High on our side, we will see the Most High take revenge on our behalf and throw down the kingdom of darkness strongholds in our lives. A lot of you want to know how to get the army of the Most High on your side to fight for you to deliver you from the strongholds the kingdom of darkness have over your life. Israelites and Gentiles, spiritual warfare is the gateway that brings the help of the Most High to your situations. Your faith is not going to bring the help of the Most High to your life. Most of you spent your entire life thinking being a believer is an automatic ticket to heaven and the evil spirits will flee from you. The synagogue of Satan disabled a lot of you that rely on your faith alone. Faith without works is dead. Israelites, in order for the Most High to order your steps, you have to take a step. The Most High can't lead someone that is standing still. You have to get up and start moving in order for the Most High to order your steps. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. In order to begin your deliverance, you have to seek the face of the Most High. Sitting around crying and getting emotional about your sad situation is not going to overthrow strongholds. If you don't do your part, how will change come? You can't rely on the Messiah that came in his own name to force you to seek the face of the Most High. Nobody is going to do this for you. You have to seek the face of the Most High to find deliverance. You have to take an active role in your deliverance. That is why you must work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. If the spirit of poverty have a stronghold over your finances, don't engage in activities that give the spirit of poverty room to grow and occupy your resources. Reckless spending invite the spirit of poverty into your life. A lack of self-control will invite many evil spirits into your life. There's a parable in the scriptures about the lost son. The young man wanted his inheritance and asked his father for his inheritance. Instead of being responsible with his inheritance, he spent his wealth on women, parties, and reckless spending until he had nothing left. And he said, A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father! Give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. And there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land. And he began to be in want. Once the lost son had nothing left, he returned to his father's house with nothing to show. Through the lost son lack of self-control, the spirit of poverty robbed him of his inheritance. Israelites, it's very important to not feed the evil spirit that have control over your life. If the spirit of poverty control your finances, don't become reckless with your money. You have to take an active role in your deliverance. Once you repent and humble yourself, you have to allow the Most High to transform you by the renewal of your mind. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. When you allow the Most High to renew your mind, you will stop praying to idols. When you stop praying to idols, you will see the hands of the Most High in your life. For those of you who want to know how to get the devils to flee, 
you have to engage in spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare is praying, fasting, and praising the Most High. Fasting is a big part of spiritual warfare. If you're serious about being delivered from evil spirits that have a stronghold over your life, you have to fast. The scriptures let us know some devils only come out through prayer and fasting. Albeit this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. To the Israelites and Gentiles that want to know what they have to do to get the spirit of lust, witchcraft, pride, poverty, idolatry, homosexuality, jealousy, division, hate, and countless other evil spirits to flee, you must fast, praise, and pray. Some people believe they have to take extreme measures to get a devil to flee. Israelites, you don't have to seek a worker of iniquity with a familiar spirit to get answers. Nobody have to perform an exorcism on you to get a devil to flee. You don't have to give a high level worker of iniquity a blood sacrifice to be delivered. You don't have to do rituals to be delivered. You don't have to do desperate things to get the results that you want. If you want a devil to flee, the scripture said, submit to the most high, resist the devil and they will flee from you. Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. You learned last week, humbling yourself before the Most High is how you submit, as well as walking in the Spirit. Resisting the devil is when you establish discipline and self-control. If you're struggling with the spirit of lust, don't engage in activities that will give the spirit of lust access to your life. You must make up your mind to overcome this spirit. The first step is to repent of the sins that open the door to the spirit of lust. Once you repent, you have to humble yourself before the Most High. Once you have done these two things, during a fast, you must pray to the Most High and make your petition known to Him. Say to the Father what you want Him to do. Israelites, when you pray, don't force it. Allow your heart and the truth to come out of your mouth. There's no need for you to pray long prayers because the Most High already know what you're in need of. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. Israelites and Gentiles, get to the point when you're praying. There's no need for you to jump up and down. You don't have to shout from the top of your lungs. There's no need for you to put on a performance when you're praying. The scriptures say you don't need to repeat yourself. You don't have to speak a lot. Praying is having a conversation with the Most High. In a conversation, two people are speaking. Allow the Most High to speak through the Holy Spirit that abide with you. The scripture said you won't be heard for your much speaking. Israelites, the Most High, the Father, is extraordinary. Don't put the Most High, the Father, in the same group with the idols you serve in the land of your captivity. The Most High is beyond what you and I could ever imagine. The Most High told us the end from the very beginning. Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. The time have come for you to see the Most High's excellence. There is nothing too hard for him. The reason so many indigenous black people are not benefiting from the many promises the Most High made to them You serve idols and the heathens successfully disconnected many of you from the Most High. When you return to the Most High and seek his face, you will begin to benefit from the many promises he made to you. The Most High is aware of your needs. He knows what you're going through. He sees how the evil spirits are tormenting you. The Father knows. That is why it's important for you to be your true authentic self when praying. Don't try to hide your sins from the Most High. It's important to confess your sins to get the help that you need. The Most High knows everything about you. There's no need for you to put on a mask to speak to your Father. He already knows everything before you know anything about yourself and this world you live in. Israelites and Gentiles, 
Simply ask the Most High for what you're in need of. Also tell the Most High what you want him to do for you. The scripture said, some have not because they ask not. Ye lust and have not, ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not because ye ask not. Ye ask and receive not because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lusts. Did you hear the scriptures? Some of you don't receive what you're asking for because your heart is not in the right place when you ask. The scripture said you don't receive because you will spend the blessing on your pleasures. For example, if the spirit of poverty has control over your finances, while you're engaging in spiritual warfare, you ask the most high to give you a million dollars or to give you money to relieve you of your financial struggle. Asking the Most High for money is not going to cause the spirit of poverty to flee from you. If the Most High give you a million dollars or he made you rich overnight, you will spend the money on your pleasures. When you ask for money instead of asking for the Most High's provision, that is what the scriptures meant when it say you ask amiss. If you're not disciplined and you lack self-control, the Most High is not going to give you money. The Father will first teach you discipline and put you in trials and tribulations that will birth self-control before he will get someone to bless you with some money. The Most High is not a genie that you make a wish and you get what you want. The Most High want you to be successful and victorious. He will put you through trials and tribulations that will bring forth self-control and discipline before he give you the desires of your heart. That is why I said to you last week that just because a person is going through trials and tribulations, it doesn't mean he or she sinned. The Most High is training him or her first before they could receive. That is why you shouldn't be upset about certain trials and tribulations. The scripture said, count it as joy when you go through certain trials. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Israelites, you have to learn to discern trials that comes from demonic oppression, from trials and tribulations that come from the Most High to bring maturity. Not all oppression is meant for your demise. Although we live in the land of our captivity, the Most High utilized the time spent here to teach us many things. For some of you, the Most High started the process of delivering you from the strongholds the enemy have over your life. However, when you saw the increase of trials and tribulations, you gave up. Some of you assume you lost the battle or the Most High didn't hear you. The truth is the trials sent by the Most High are used to transform you into the man or woman you need to become before you could receive the desires of your heart. It's not that the Most High didn't hear you. Most of you are rejecting the deliverance process. After the Most High called Paul to minister to the Gentiles, the Most High sent him a thorn in the flesh to prevent Paul from becoming proud, as well as to keep him humble before the Most High. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations that was given to me, a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. The Most High utilized Paul's life to reach his people. In the process of his journey, Satan was allowed to persecute him to keep him from becoming proud. Israelites, after a successful prayer, don't be surprised when things start to fall apart instead of getting better. When this happened, the Most High is doing what you ask of him. You must discern the trials from the Most High from demonic oppression. Israelites and Gentiles, the Most High doesn't operate like the world. Satan blessed the workers of iniquity that serve him when they follow his instructions. If the idol God wants a blood sacrifice in exchange for the money and power the worker of iniquity is requesting, the worker of iniquity will give the idol a blood sacrifice. After the satanic rituals are complete, that person becomes successful overnight. Suddenly, they have the Midas touch. When it comes to the Most High, 
He will work on your character first. Once you pass the test, he will take you to the next level. Israelites, this is why it's important for you to allow the Most High to do the necessary work in you. If you wait on the Most High, you will receive the desires of your heart according to his will. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. When you wait on the Most High, success will not come overnight. The length of your deliverance is solely on you. If you reject the way the Most High choose to deliver you, you will delay the process. Remember when our ancestors went around in circles in the wilderness for 40 years? An 11-day journey turned into 40 years because the generation alive at that time refused to allow the Most High to do the necessary work to get them to their blessing, which was the promised land, a land flowing with milk and honey. But as for you, your carcasses, they shall fall in this wilderness, and your children shall wander in the wilderness 40 years and bear your whoredoms until your carcasses be wasted in the wilderness. After the number of the days in which ye searched the land, even forty days, each day for a year, shall ye bear your iniquities, even forty years, and ye shall know my breach of promise. I, the Lord, have said, I will surely do it unto all this evil congregation that are gathered together against me in this wilderness. They shall be consumed, and there they shall die. The Most High will wait until you humble yourself to allow him to do the work in you. Israelites, don't mistake the way the Most High operates for failure or for the Father not listening to you. The Most High doesn't operate the way you see Satan blessing his people. Israelites, it's extremely important for you to get to know the Most High. Many of you were serving idols and lost in idolatry. The Most High gave you a chance to get to know him in the awakening. Walking in the spirit is nothing like our lives in the flesh. Israelites, another important thing for you to remember when you're praying, doing a fast, you must have confidence. If you don't have confidence, you won't receive what you're asking for. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. In all things, whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing, ye shall receive. The disappointment many of you received from serving the idols of the heathens made many of you lack confidence in the words of the Most High. Israelites, you have to understand that everything taught to you in the beast culture were lies. You wasn't interacting with the Most High, but with idols. That is why you didn't see the hands of the Most High in your life. The people of the Most High was separated from him when you was lost in religion. Now that the awakening is here, the time have come for you to stop confusing the Most High with Baal. The time have come for you to stop referring to the Most High as Baal. We have to return the glory back to the Most High. And it shall be at that day, saith the Lord, that thou shalt call me Ishai, and shalt call me no more Belai. The Most High shouldn't be the one to suffer the consequences for the failures of the idols you serve. The hour hath come, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship in spirit and in truth. That time is now. Religious falsehoods kept us away from the Most High. Israelites, we have to give the word of the Most High a chance with truth. Now that the Most High have awakened you out of your slumber, you have to get to know the Father. The Father said his words would not return to him void. It would do what he sent it to do. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. 
If you know what the word of the Most High promised, you must confidently speak the words back to the Most High. Israelites, don't allow the synagogue of Satan to make you feel unworthy, nor should you let the kingdom of darkness make you feel as if you don't deserve anything because you have sinned. If the Most High didn't find you worthy, he would have let you perish in your sins. He would have closed your eyes and allowed a strong delusion to come upon you. You wouldn't be a part of the awakening. You would be in religion, being deceived by the workers of iniquity in the pagan church. Know that everyone that would be saved was predestined. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. You have to come boldly before the throne of the Most High in prayer. You can't be intimidated. As long as you have respect and you're speaking according to the will of the Most High, Israelites, talk to your father. Satan stand boldly before the throne of the Most High, accusing us day and night. You must have confidence and trust that the Most High is with you. Israelites, I know you're used to being discriminated against in the B system. The heathens will say you're unworthy. Don't listen to them and don't listen to the unclean spirits that put these thoughts into your mind. Do like the scripture said and cast down those wicked imaginations. The Most High don't want to see anyone perish. The Father doesn't get any glory nor any pleasure when his creation dies. Not even the wicked. The Most High rather have the wicked repent than to die. Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, saith the Lord God, and not that he should return from his ways and live? If you heard the call, the Most High wants to save your life. The scripture in the book of 1 John said that your asking must be within his will. The scripture said, if we ask him anything according to his will. Did you hear that, Israelites? According to his will. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Whatever you ask the Most High, it must be according to his will. Like I said to you earlier, the Most High is not a genie where you can make a wish and receive whatever you want. Your request must be according to his will for your life. If we go back to the example of the spirit of poverty having a stronghold in your life, if you ask the Most High for money instead of provision, asking for money is not according to the will of the Most High. Asking for the Most High to provide for you is asking according to his will. Remember, the words of the Most High will not return to him void. It would do what the Most High sent it to do. The word is alive, active, and powerful. It's important for you to speak the word to the Most High to get the desires of your heart. If you're struggling with the spirit of lust, ask the Most High to deliver you from the spirit of lust. You can remind the Most High about what he said about walking in the spirit so that we won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. You will say to the Most High, help me walk in the Spirit so that I won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. This I say then, walk in the Spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Once you ask the Most High to help you walk in the Spirit to not fulfill the lust of the flesh, the Most High will begin to work on your character to help you achieve this goal. I know some of you are expecting the Most High to cast out the Spirit of lust. Some of you believe once the Most High casts out the spirit of lust, you won't ever feel lustful anymore. Israelites and Gentiles, that's not how it works. And also, that's not how the Most High operates. The spirit of lust will come back to tempt you, even in the process of your deliverance. Remember, the devil will always return. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he, and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. Israelites and Gentiles, you need to know that Spirits don't die. 
The unclean spirits are cast out into dry places to be tormented like the scripture said. You should always expect the devil to return. As long as we live in this beast system among our enemies, the devils will always return. The workers of iniquity will continue to project evil spirits against you. Also, the hidden covenants you establish in the beast system as well as in the spirit realm give access to evil spirits to tempt you. The Satans will always try to tempt you. That is why it's important for you to allow the Most High to transform you so that you can stand against the kingdom of darkness to reject their wicked temptations and offers. Being transformed is a part of the deliverance process. Israelites, know that the Most High will not only cast out the devil, but he will also work on you to strengthen you so that you won't fold under pressure. Israelites, put on the whole armor of the Most High so that you can stand against the unclean spirits that come to tempt you. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Israelites and Gentiles, if you're truly seeking righteousness with a pure heart, your choices will reflect that. If the spirit of lust come to tempt you, you have to decide whether or not you will let the spirit have its way in your life. Most of you are used to unclean spirits influencing your life. You have to make up your mind to be set free from demonic bondage so that the Most High can transform you. Israelites and Gentiles, in order to get evil spirits to flee, you have to engage in spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare is praying, fasting, and praising the Most High. Fasting is very important in spiritual warfare. Fasting is your sacrifice. Also, fasting oppresses the flesh so that the spirit can be nourished. When your spirit is nourished, your spirit becomes dominant, weakening the flesh. When the flesh is no longer dominant, unclean spirits can't influence your life. That is how you become delivered. Israelites, it's really important for you to humble yourself before the Most High so that he can transform you into the man or woman he needs you to be according to his will. Israelites, only the Most High can transform you into the person he created you to be. Allow the Most High to lead you in every area of your life. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, but when he is tried... He shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren.